I mean, you read the title. Not much else to it. And we are live. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Money Moves. I'm your host, Jackson Klein, and welcome to my brand new series, How to Make Twitch Panels That Are Not Basic. As always, follow my social medias down in the description below. Let's get started. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is... Actually, let me just do this right off the bat. So, to start, you're going to hit Create New on Photoshop. Uh, you can do a custom, or I like to click HD TV, you know, 1080p. I'm going to name this Starting Soon. Just like that. Uh, change the resolution to 300. And all this, make sure orientation is horizontal, and we're all set. So, uh, to get rid of these blue bars, because some of you might have them sometimes, just hit Control H on the keyboard, or if not, you can hit View, and it should be under Extras. So that would show that. We will actually be using that a little bit later. So, to get started, let me show you a project that we're going to be doing. So, let's go in here. Alright, so this is what we're going after. Um, most streams I see um, are kind of flashy. I mean, you don't really need that much as Twitch is becoming more and more minimalistic. So we're looking for something like this. So I will show you how to make all this. Um, okay, so starting soon. To start, we're going to add a new layer. We're going to keep the background as is. We're not going to change it at all. Uh, what we want to do now is we're going to get a square shape. So you're going to come down here, compress you on your keyboard, and that should bring you to the shape tool. Now, you can either do a rectangle, or I like to always use the custom shape tool, so I'm going to click on that. Then up top, you have all your shapes. Um, not all of you will have this, you're just going to hit settings, and you're just going to hit, well, small thumbnail, large thumbnail, whatever you want. It'll just show you the size of it. First small, runs faster, and hit square, and then you're going to pick a color of your choice. So we're going to come here, and let's see, let's do a purple, you know what, let's do an orange and yellow theme. So, you never want the slider to be all the way to the right, because these colors are kind of too bright, so something like that will work, so EC5222 is the hex color, we're going to hit OK, the uh, stroke, we're just going to cancel that out, so there's none at all, then with your shape tool, you're just going to make a square like that. Now to copy the square, because we want them all the same size, you just hit Control J. What that does is it's going to duplicate the layer. Then we're going to do it again. We're going to organize them so they're... Okay, alright, there we go. So they're far apart, just like that, kind of like the Windows logo. We're going to take different colors of each square. We're going to want... You can do as many colors as you want. In this case, I'm going to do two different colors and two different shades of each. So, I'm going to click on this top right one. This one, I will make the secondary color. So, bring this to yellow. Let's see, let's find a good one. Okay, yellow does not want to work. I do web color. That'll help us find it a little bit more. Okay. Then back out. Okay, change that color like that. Uh, this one, we can make a different shade of yellow. So, let's start. We'll switch it. Go back. Let's make this one a little bit, mm, let's see, I don't, I'm not really a fan of all these yellows, okay, there we go, make this one super bright, something like that, yeah, I think that's okay, we're going to keep the orange uh, on the top left, and then we're going to change, of course, the shade of this one, so let's bring this one down a bit, something like that, uh, you know what? Now I think about it, I think this is kind of ugly. Um, you know, we'll see how it turns out. It's kind of like an autumn sort of vibe. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring all these together. So we can zoom in to make sure it's spot on. If you want, you can use the arrow keys. I'm just going to use my mouse right now. And now we have just a basic pattern. So we're going to click on the first square that we did in the Layers tab over here. Hold Shift, and then click the top. What that does is you're going to select all of them. And then right click, you're going to go to rasterize layers. And now we should be able to merge them. So you're going to hit merge layers, and we'll have one solid shape. And if you hit control T, or if you don't want to do that, you hit, okay, I'm wrong, never mind, hit control T. Uh, 
you don't need to hold shift to lock in the shape or the transform tool in Adobe Photoshop 2020. So I'm just going to hold it down like this. And we're going to move it and just drag it into the corner. Now what we're going to start doing is by creating another group. So we're going to create another group and type in right corner. Okay, so we have the square. We're going to drag this into the right corner group. And then all we're going to do is hit Control J, and then we'll have another one. And you can do as many as you'd like, so depending on how you want these corners to be. So if you want a bigger one, you can put more squares. Um, at the end, you can just transform it if you really want to, but it's all up to you. So I'm going to just do a decent amount. Let's see. I'm going to do another one. Another one. I'm just going to do as many as we kind of, you know, desire. If you really want, you can change up how these are displaying. But what I mean is I can rotate all the shapes, you know, just kind of get free with it. So that's what we have so far. If you like that, great. Um, you'll follow the next few steps uh, without the one we're about to do. So right corner, all this is now, you know, a big jumbled mess. We got to clean it up. So we're just going to do the same thing. Click one, hit shift, and just merge the layers. So now this is one big shape. Okay. And to make this cool sort of pattern that we did, we're going to hit up top, hit filter. And we're going to go to liquify. This brings up our liquify filter. Now, the brush size will change. So if I increase the brush size, the whole thing and how much it's going to pull. So if I do a smaller brush size, it's less. So to start, I think I'm going to go at a 60 side or 60 percent. And I'm just going to start dragging out however much I want. Just like this. Um, make sure. So up top, you see, we don't want it to kind of pull down like it is here. We want to keep it covered. So just be wary of that. Uh, every now and then, just change your brush size to make it randomized. Or if you know, if you want to keep it similar, go ahead. It is your design to play with. All right. So this looks good. My issue is that these sides over here are all uniform. So we're just going to bring down, actually no, we could bring up the brush size. And just kind of pull these more included in a different direction. And then we'll pull them back. Just like that. This is why sometimes it's a good idea to rotate each shape when we were making the bigger one. That. Okay. Okay, so that looks pretty good. That's kind of a fall vibe if you're into that. Next, you're just going to hit OK. Okay, now we have this fancy beard camouflage type shape. Once again, you're going to hit Control J, and this is able to move. Hit Control T. Uh, if you don't want to, you can hit Rotate 180. Or the other option you can do is hold down shift and then just drag along the corners. Uh, the shift lock, shift will lock the points. So it won't be smooth like this. If you hold shift, it'll be at each, I think it's 15 degrees. So we're going to just turn it 180 and drag it to the other side. Okay, so we have these two finished. Okay, um, the size is a little big, in my opinion, so we're going to take it down a little bit. Okay. Uh, they don't have to be the exact same size, but if you want, you can just delete one and do the other. Okay. Do that. Make sure that your thing's still recording. Okay. And so this is our second one, so we're actually going to drag this out to keep it organized. So we're going to close right corner, and then we're going to add a new group, and name it, uh, so we'll name it left corner, it doesn't have to be bottom left. 
more than that. Okay, so drag this into here, and that's all set up. Uh, you'll see actually on this one that you have one in the top left and one in the bottom right. Uh, to do that, it's just the same process. You hit Control J, you rotate, you know, just move it however you want. You can mess with it. Uh, here, let's actually shrink these a bit so they look a little bit strange. Okay, and then actually I'm going to take this one out before, hit right corner. So now we have this, and we just move it like that. Perfect. Now, to make the design, because right now you have a lot of open space, right? So you want to close it in. You can. You don't have to, but I would. So at the top and on the sides, we're going to just take one of these designs. We're actually going to drag this all the way out. What you want to do is you're going to flip it all the way around so it's a straight edge. And you're just going to stretch it. I'm going to stretch it all the way out. Hit the check mark at the top. And you're actually going to want to place this one because it has a hard line over here. You're going to want to place it all the way underneath all these layers so it blends in better. Just like that. Hit Control J again and bring it up. Control T. And then you can just do flip vertical. And then it should be upside down. And then we can match the bottom. All right, so those look pretty symmetrical. If you really want to like perfect on where they are, uh, we're going to go back to what I mentioned in the start and hit Control H. So when you have Control H open, you'll see all these pink lines show up, and you can line it up with that blue bar. So this one actually isn't high enough. I'm going to bring it up, and they are now aligned. Okay, uh, the next thing we're going to do is you're going to add the name. So we hit T. We're going to actually go on our layers and click left corner and add a new tab. Oh, make sure it is not in the group. Move it down like that. Close these up just so it's a little bit easier. Then uh, the font I'm using, we will use it's called Gold Girls. You can find this on the font. Uh, you can't actually commercially use it unless you buy a license from them. But for this case, uh, it's just a test, so we'll be okay. All right, so you can do whatever color you want. I'm going to use black in this instance. Uh, when you use text, you want to make sure that you change the size font, or the font size. Um, you don't want to transform it, or sometimes it's going to become blurry. So we're going to just put in money moves. Okay, okay. Money moves. Just like that. So you're going to put in your Twitch name. You're going to add another one right under here. So we're going to actually, instead of 48, we're going to say something like 18 is starting soon. And then one, two, three, here we go. Just like that. And you have a basic started screen. It's not too crazy. Um, so if we actually hit Control H, we can actually center the money moves. Uh, it'll tell me when it's centered. Oh, wait. Here we go. Okay, this is, there we go. Center. Uh, this one, I don't always put Centered, I usually like to have it offset to the right, just like that. I think it gives a little bit more depth. Not depth, but, I don't know, a little bit of difference. Um, so on this one, we also have a glow effect, so I will show you how to do that. To do glow effects, um, it's pretty simple. Uh, you have a couple options, so you could just do... Oh, sorry, let me redo that. But you click on the side of the layer, double-click, and you come up with the Layer Style tab. All we have to do is do outer glow. Uh, we can change the color of the glow, so we want to match it. We can do yellow, for instance. We'll do the same yellow. And then we can bring up normal, blend blend mode normal. The opacity we can bring down a bit. The size we want to bring down like that. Now that's okay. Um, it doesn't seem as glowy as this one. This one's more like a blurred. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of these effects. So we're going to reopen it. Just uncheck that. Uh, one way I like to do the effects is I will hit Control J and duplicate the text. And then just like that, we're going to actually change the color of this font of the one we duplicated. Let's put it at yellow of what we did last time. Then you're going to just place it. I mean, you could do this too. This is like an offset thing. 
um, but we're going to just place it over the text. You're going to hit filter. Where is it? Um, blur, sorry. And then you're going to hit Gaussian blur. Uh, convert to smart object. And then you're going to bring this down. Uh, let's, let's say about 12.5. Then with this one, you're going to place this directly under the money wings, and you have a little bit more glowy and blurry effect to it. Uh, you can put that on the starting soon. Once again, it's all preference. You can make this as big as you want. Really, you can change this up however you want. Now, the next thing is I have all the social medias included. That one is up to you. Um, I really recommend it. So when people look, they can look you up on social media, maybe give you a follow. You know, it's up to you. So I'm just going to take the YouTube logo. So you're just going to find one online, open it up, you know, do what you want with it. And you're going to just make it smaller, drop that in right there. Now, if you want your starting soon screen to be more cohesive, what you can do is, or I guess more like one theme. You can take the YouTube and you're going to zoom in. So you're going to hit Control, Alt, and then use your scroll wheel. And that changes where you're going to zoom in using the mouse cursor. So we're going to zoom in on the YouTube. Now, if we take the magic wand to tool, so you're just going to press W. You're going to click right here and then hit G. G is the fill bucket. Now, there's three tools under it. So gradient, paint bucket, and 3D material drop tool. Just hit paint, paint bucket. And then this is the color we'll be using. So bottom left corner, right around here. Okay, so let's say we want to match it with this orange at the top. Okay, and we just fill it in like that. Control D to deselect. And you have an orange YouTube button. Really not too difficult. So you're just going to place this in the top left. And then you're, oh, okay, that's way too big. Um, you're going to make this black. Well, whatever color you want, once again. But, you're going to lower the font size, let's say about 12. 12 is okay, uh, let's do 14, a little bit bigger. Okay, then we're just going to type in the name of the YouTube channel. Money Moves. Okay, and you're just going to actually hit Control H this time, because you do want all these to match, and you're just going to move it over. Just like that, so it's online. And then the next time you do another one, it will actually show you the distance. So you'll see a little pink line pop up right here. So if I do another, okay, let's just copy and paste that, or Control J, and I turn on this grid. I'm not really a grid. Hmm. It'll show you the distance and how much you need, well, not how much you need to move it. Right, so it does show you the distance, but you just wanna match it up as best as you can if it'll actually work, but it'll pretty much snap into place. This one you can just move out further and just kind of eyeball it. If you don't want to eyeball it, uh, there's some things you can do. You can hit View. Actually, if you hit Control R, now you see all these rulers pop up, and when you move your mouse, all these lines move around with it. That's more for framing things on the entire canvas. If you hit View, you can do, hmm, what could you do? Uh, you could hit show, and then you have all these um, layer edges. So, actually, when you click stuff, it'll show you the edge of the layer. If you really want to get precise in how much distance you have between each. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. I'm going to turn it off. Uh, what, what was it called? Layer edges. But there's a bunch of things you can do. Um, filter, if you keep want to liquefy stuff, or you want to change something around, like let's say we take this left corner, filter, distort, um, no, let's do pixelate. Actually, you know what? Just hit filter gallery. It'll give you a much easier way to look at it. Artistic, brush strokes, distort, sketch, stylized texture. So let's do texture. So you can see this kind of gives it a very interesting look to it, which I'm actually a big fan of this now. I really like this stained glass one. All right, so you look at that. It's like, it's still sort of camouflage, but it's not like traditional. It's like digital camouflage with these weird like tiles but you get the point yeah so this is a 
I don't even know how many part series, but I will keep doing designs just like this one in multiple parts among this series. So today has been the starting soon. I'll do the offline, then the in-game overlay, intermission, panels, whatever you guys can need. I'll see you guys next time.